morning, everybody. It is Tuesday and the first day of the Compassio Verica Readathon. I'm really sorry that there's no footage from Monday. I intended for there to be, but um, I have two luxating patellas, one in each knee, obviously, and uh, they were acting up yesterday, so I was not able to film or get much done. The plan for today is to read Night by Ellie Wiesel as well as Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Inc. Night will satisfy our potions requirement of three dragonfly wings as it is part of a trilogy. I'm also really hoping to keep going on my audiobooks at the moment. I'm listening to The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. Really fluffy, fun rom-com. Definitely recommend. As well as A Clash of Kings by George R.R. R. Martin. The latter is hopefully going to satisfy our potions requirement of A Golden Compass, a book that has a map. While The Honey Don't List is quite a bit of a humorous read, so hopefully, 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 it will satisfy our requirement of Powdered Diaphragm of Banshee. That all said, I'm gonna go have some breakfast. I um, my sister and I are going to watch a movie today, so maybe I'll put a clip of that, maybe not. And yeah, we'll see how everything goes from there. Everybody else is going to Yeah, I love this part. Hello, so Abby and I just finished watching Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which has to be my favorite film solely because of Alfonso Cuaron. So I am up in my room now and I got a letter from my friend Cornelia who lives in Denmark. And so I think I'll respond to her. I thought we could open her letter together. She tends to send very lovely, very aesthetically pleasing letters. So I'm really excited. Also, a book came from Thrift Books, and I'll be right back. I have to show it to you. It's so beautiful. Okay, before I show you, I just want you to remember that I got this for $3.99. Used, so cheap and helping the environment. Yippee! Okay, ready? This is an anthology of Jane Austen's work. It's not all of her novels, but it's quite a few of them. We've got Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, and Northanger Abbey. And, I mean, look at it. It's so beautiful, and it's gilded, and somebody... Uh, see who owned this before me. Hannah Nolte. This was Hannah Nolte's book. So Hannah, thank you for giving this book another life for a new person. I'm really looking forward to reading it. I think I'm going to turn on the audiobook, either uh, The Honey Don't List or A Clash of Kings. And yeah, let's let's get to responding to Cornelia's letter. Oh, also Cornelia's a YouTube channel. I'll link it above and below. Your songs, laughing at the way you would say if only baby there were cameras in the traffic lights they'd make me a star they'd make me a star i want to go to me i just finished writing cornelia back i have actually two more letters to catch up on one for my friend clary and one for my friend alejandra in spain uh, but I think I'll do that another day. Um, before dinner, I'm just going to finish Night by Ellie Wiesel. And then we'll have lasagna, which I'm excited for. It, there were no gluten-free lasagna noodles at the store for like six weeks. So I'm really looking forward to it. And then I think I'll go on a walk. And that's the plan so far. I was thinking of this when I heard the sound of a violin. The sound of a violin in this dark shed where the dead were heaped on the living. What madman could be playing the violin here at the brink of his own grave? Or was it really an hallucination? It must have been Julek. He played a fragment from Beethoven's concerto. I had never heard sounds so pure, in such a silence. How had he managed to free himself, to draw his body from under mine without my being aware of it? It was pitch dark. I could hear only the violin, and it was as though Julik's soul were the bow. He was playing his life. The whole of his life was gliding on the strings. His lost hopes, his charred past, his extinguished future. He played as he would never play again. I shall never forget Julik. How could I forget that concert given to an audience of dying and dead men? 
To this day, whenever I hear Beethoven played, my eyes close, and out of the dark rises the sad, pale face of my Polish friend, as he said farewell on his violin to an audience of dying men. I do not know for how long he played. I was overcome by sleep. When I awoke in the daylight, I could see Zulik opposite me, slumped over, dead. Near him lay his violin, smashed, trampled. A strange, overwhelming little corpse. Elie Wiesel. I just finished Night by Elie Wiesel, and... <laughs> Wow. It read like fiction, and I'm sure that if you've read Night and um, you were born after World War II, you weren't really familiar with the time period, uh, it kind of felt that way too. It, it, everything that he went through was so horrific and so animalistic that it just seemed fake. Like, I cannot imagine people doing that to other people. And it's weird to read stories. It's, it's always been weird for me to read about World War II um, because I'm ethnically Jewish, and it didn't matter if you were a practicing Jew, uh, if you were connected to Judaism at all, you, you were a victim, as well as if you were a part of the LGBTQ plus community, if you were of color, if you were disabled, etc. Yeah, so let's see. what part The parts of the book that hit me the most, I would say, would be the excerpt about the violinist um, playing his violin on the night he died for an audience of dying and dead people. Something else in the book that really touched me was the separation of self and body. Vissal's experience, it was just very powerfully penned. Uh, he's quite, he was quite a talented writer. The pacing in the book was a bit off, but I think that was the point. It's not supposed to be a lullaby of a book. It's not supposed to um, make you happy or be an enjoyable read. It's an account of um, a life marred by hatred, and um, it was really, really, really powerful. I will definitely be reading Dawn, which is the next installment of the trilogy, as well as the final uh, novel in the trilogy. Not sure what that's called, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I read it. And with that book, I have added three crushed dragonfly wings to my potion of compassio, very gay. And um, so one step closer. I just feel sad now. Um, but that's the point. That's the point. <laughs> Sweet dreams and the best for you I'm done getting stressed Am I feeling boots? Or, no, I think I'm feeling witchy shoes today But something still remains A feeling that's so strange And now I can't stop Dishes in the kitchen in the Something like this In this happy birthday I'm saying Jeff, uh, see, see that? Oh, the thing. Look up Happy Thank Birthday. You. Or you can do the, um, the, like, the balloon. But I think the balloon is that does it. Dishes in the kitchen. Dancing in the rain. You're singing in the shower. Your hair stuck in the drain. just finished up some college research stuff it's it's really weird um i feel like i'm still like seven but i'm going to be of age in the wizarding world this year it's whack i'm the age harry was in deathly hollows but um it's also really exciting uh looking for colleges can be a lot of fun it's stressful uh, you have to do a lot of research you have to consider net finances and debt and uh, i want to go into the film industry so networking is also a really important part of this process for me as well as um, going to places that are near art and that are very diverse with people i can learn from and whose stories i can hear and help to amplify. I'm really looking forward to it though. At the moment, kind of the top ones that I can remember that I really would love to go to are USC, NYU, 
I think Tish, Tish, is that how it's pronounced? I don't know. UCLA, then we've got Loyola, uh, Chapman, even though Stephen Galloway is the dean. That's the guy from Hollywood Reporter that everyone wants to leave. <laughs> I'm sure he's a lovely person. He's just annoying on interviews. But yeah, it's just, it's really exciting. I, I'm really looking forward to watching and being an active part of my life's trajectory. I'm going to finish the Unhoneymooners on my phone. I believe I have two hours left. And while I do that, I think I'm gonna paint. And then after that, I might film a video for Thursday. I need to film that. And then I will read some more. <laughs> and yeah, that's the agenda as of. 1.31 p.m. on Wednesday, June the 24th. June 5th, 1992. Dear friend, I wanted to tell you about us running. There was this beautiful sunset, and there was this hill. The hill up to the 18th green where Patrick and I spit wine from laughing. In just a few hours before, Sam and Patrick and everyone I love and know had their last day of high school ever. And I was happy, because they were happy. My sister even let me hug her in the hallway. Congratulations was the word of the day. So, Sam and Patrick and I went to the big boy and smoked cigarettes. Then we went walking, waiting for it to be time to go to Rocky Horror. And we were talking about things that seemed important at the time. We were looking up at that hill. And then Patrick started running after the sunset, and Sam immediately followed him. And I saw them in silhouette, running after the sun. Then I started running, and everything was as good as it could be. We can beat them forever and ever. How we can be heroes. I just finished The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren and I gave it a solid four stars out of five. It is definitely my second favorite Christina Lauren book so far. I have read Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, The um, Honey Don't List, as well as The Unhoneymooners, and my favorites are actually in that exact order. I thought the premise of this book was just hilarious. It's about a reality TV show couple that actually don't get along, but everyone thinks that they have this like picture-perfect marriage, and they go on a book tour, and their assistants have to manage them while on the book tour so that they keep up the public appearance, and during this time, the assistants fall in love. I am going to get ready for bed and finish the perks of being a wallflower, which means that today I will have satisfied two ingredients for our Compassio Varicate potion. I am going to go do that and then I will I will go to sleep because it's late and I'm tired and tomorrow's a whole brand new day full of reading I have three books scheduled for tomorrow we saw how well that went today so we'll see how it goes in la mañana good morning it is Thursday June the 25th and I think it's like 9.30, somewhere in there. So I woke up late today because this was the first day this week I didn't have a doctor's appointment or something. So that was really nice. Um, my wrist's doing good. My incision looks really nice. And I'm really, really, really grateful for my surgeon. He did a really lovely job. And so far I can bend it this much. Isn't that great? Last night I got to page 100 of The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is a reread. It is one of my favorite books of all time. So I'm gonna go eat breakfast. I think I'm gonna have a gluten-free bagel and finish that one up. And then I have three books on the list today, which I will enlighten you on later. In other news, I am the first thing I'm gonna do is my laundry because that was not only today's chore, but it was yesterday's chore and the day before yesterday's chore, and the day before yesterday's chore, so you could say I'm on top of things. All that said, I'm gonna go put the clothes in the laundry machine, I'm gonna go make a bagel with my two usable hands, it's so exciting, and read, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.
So I have some laundry to fold and I just finished The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is my third reread of Stephen Chbosky's first novel and I thought we could talk about my thoughts on it while I fold said laundry. So The Perks of Being a Wallflower is potentially my favorite book of all time. Not because the writing style is incredibly vivid or eloquent or flowery, not because the plot is like incredibly intriguing because I'm just really in love with the characters and I, I relate to this story so much. I don't know if I can articulate with words what this book means to me. Um, if you if you happen to pick this one up, just know that that is how I think. Charlie's narration is the way that I as an individual function and the way that I think. Uh, he suffers with some mental illnesses and I thought that the exploration of that in the book, even the third time around, was for me, and I know it'll be different for everyone, for every experience, for me, it was spot on. This book doesn't, in my opinion, glamorize mental illness. It's, it's just a part of his life, and it's in everything that he does, but it doesn't dictate everything that he does, you know? It definitely has influence and is something he struggles with daily, but it doesn't define his life. Hey, it's my pajama pants. I gave this a five star rating again. Um, it's just, it's a very special book. I would describe it as the modern day self-aware catcher in the rye. Okay, I just finished up my laundry. I'm gonna put it away now and then I am going to read Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is the book that I am reading to check off concentrated liquid moonshine from my potions ingredient. The prompt is read a book, well start a book, read a book, start a book while drinking a cup of tea. Book set, tea brewed, candle lit. Let the reading commence. Oh, she left her books in my bed and her song in my head. I've been undone. Oh, Saturday sun. I met someone out on the west coast. I gotta get back to Kenneth. Grief. So I'm only like 40 pages in and I'm already in love. Celeste Ng, it's so nice to be back in your words because you have such a way with them. Celeste Ng has to be another one of my favorite authors of all time. I just love her writing style and I love how she approaches character. I think it's really unique and very nuanced and ah, I'm loving it already. And it's really fun because I feel like it's going to be kind of like a satire or not necessarily a satire, but a hyperbolic view of, of the classic suburban life. And I love, I love, 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 love books and movies and everything that does that. I think it's hilarious, but it's also really uh, a really good way to look at how society functions on a smaller scale. <laughs> Hi, good morning. It is the 26th of June, 2020, and I am going to go practice driving with my dad. Am I terrified? Absolutely. Um, for those of you who do not know, I started driving over a year and a half ago, like practicing driving, and it gave me so much anxiety that I would just start bawling. Like we'd literally be doing laps around my block when no one was there and I'd just be sobbing. But you know what? I It's a new day, it's a new me, and it's time to give it another shot because to be completely honest, all I want is to get a job at Barnes & Noble and drive there by myself so that I can just stay there forever, forever. 
in a day. That's the scoop. What, oh, ha, ha, ha. what else am I doing today? Um, I am going to finish Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng and work on A Clash of Kings. I am at 61% of the way. That will satisfy my requirement for Compassio Verique of A Golden Compass. And I'm also going to work on The Whisper Man. It's a horror book. Real excited. I love a thriller. I love me a thriller. What else am I going to do today? I have to film a video for Saturday. I'm a little behind on videos, but that's okay. I have to edit said video, wash my sheets. I did do my clothes, but I have to do my sheets now. And yeah, that's the plan. So I am going to go do laps around my high school and try to maintain my sanity. Almost gave it away. Would you hear me out? If I told you I was terrified of days, thought I was gonna break. Oh, I couldn't stop it. Hello, I just got back from driving. I did it. I didn't have a panic attack. I can park now. I'm not horrible. I can reverse. I can go in loop-de-loops. It's pretty good time. It's a pretty good time. I say so myself. I also turned on notifications so I will be emailed when my local Barnes & Noble has a job opening because I've decided that that, that is my dream high school life is to, to drive to Barnes & Noble after school and work there and on my breaks just get lattes and read. Like that just sounds heavenly and I'm sure I'm idealizing it too much but it just... Ah, it just sounds so great. Um, I think right now I'm going to listen to my audiobook for The Whisper Man, which is a horror novel. I'm not sure what ingredient it satisfies, but I will put it up here. It's pretty good so far. It's spooky, scary werewolf bar mitzvah. I need to stop saying that because literally no one watches 30 Rock. But I think I'm going to do that. I might do some art or some bullet journaling while I do that. And... I need to film a video for tomorrow. That's important. I think I'm going to do the mid-year freakout tag because I'm going to succumb to peer pressure. <laughs> no, it just looks fun. Um, yeah, that's the plan. Ciao. Do you believe me now that I always had the best intentions, babe? Always wanted to stay. Okay, I'm about 20% of the way through The Whisper Man so far. Oh, Emma, hey, it is so creative. I will say, though, I recently finished Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. Very similar premises. I preferred Imaginary Friend, but this one has its own voice and its own character, and I am enjoying it quite a bit. I plan on talking to my friend Austin in a few minutes just to catch up. Good to keep in contact. Socialization is good. And then I hope to read a lot, a lot. I really want to finish Little Fires Everywhere by our favorite Celestine. Um, I'm going to go talk to Austin, and I'll get back to you for Little Fires Everywhere and a nice cup of tea. Hello. your folding chair next to me my feet are buried in the sand and there's a breeze there's a shadow you can't see my eyes and the sea is just a wetter version of the skies let's get a silver bullet trailer Baby, bye. I'll safety pin this clothes all cool, and you'll graffiti up his ties. I got a perfect bar. Hello, so I'm in my pantry because everywhere in my house is really loud right now. But Abby and I are gonna go watch Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Uh, I finished editing a video, I'm gonna brew a cup of tea, and I'm gonna read Little Fires Everywhere when we're done. Did you put your name into the goblet of fire, Harry? Dumbledore asked calmly. 
Hello, happy Saturday, the 27th of June. The miscellaneous noises are home renovations. Please do pardon them. Today, the plan is to finish Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, as well as at least getting a good start on Black Boy by Richard Wright. I'm also really hoping to get in at least three hours of my audiobook for A Clash of Kings by George R.R. R. Martin and get pretty far on The Whisper Man by Alex something. I'm really excited for today. I think it should be a good day to read. Um, tomorrow morning I'm gonna read a little too, but then our Compasio Verique readathon will have been finished, will have completed it, and that that is very exciting and also kind of terrifying because I am nowhere near <laughs> to reading 10 books, but that's not the point. That's not the point. Alrighty, Just I'm gonna go. Come and open up your folding chair next to me My feet are buried in the sand And there's a breeze There's a shadow Hello, so I've been editing the video you are currently watching for approximately five hours now, so I think it's time for a reading break. Um, I can't decide if I want to have this be the last day of the post New Year's readathon or tomorrow, just like editing wise and posting wise. I think, I think I'm gonna have it be today just so that I can make sure that my upload schedule is regular because you gotta please the YouTube algorithm, don't ya? I have got a cup of tea here. Um, I'm going to finish up Little Fires Everywhere for real this time. It's fantastic. I'm so enjoying it and I'm really grateful for my friend Austin for getting it for me. So thank you, Austin. What else? I need to do my physical therapy. I'll do that first. Probably walk a dog later. Um, yeah, that's the plan. I got my last book from an order I made from Thrift Books, The Lies of Locke Lamora. So I'm so excited for that. And yeah. <laughs> That's so exciting. What would you rate it so far? Um, I, th I need to finish it. No, I know, but so far, what would you say? It's like nothing I've ever read. I mean, um, as a work of fiction on a scale of one to five, yeah. I think I have to finish it to rate that. Okay, well, tell me later then. Yeah, because the ending could uh, yeah. cement it or boil it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Waking up in this bed next to you, swear the room here yeah, got no ceiling. If we lay, let the day just pass us by. I might get to too much talking. I might have to tell you something. Damn. I like me better when I'm with you. I like me better. Hi, it is 7.50, probably 5 by now. Uh, on the last day of the Compasio Verique Readathon, um, I have 100 pages left of Little Fires Everywhere, which I will finish tonight. So overall, I read four books during the duration of this readathon, which lasted for me, I think, five days. So four books in five days, I think that's pretty reasonable. Okay, so the books I have finished so far for this readathon are Night by Ellie Wiesel, which satisfied our ingredient of three crushed dragonfly wings that stood for a book that was part of a trilogy. Then I read The Perks of Being a Wallflower and this ended up working for our rhubarb thistles, seven of them. I believe they needed to be finely chopped and that was associated with a book with a green cover. And I also read The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren, satisfying the need for a humorous read, aka powdered diaphragm of banshee. I was thinking about how you would powder a diaphragm and it just sounds like a lot of work. Then of course what I'm reading now, Little Fires Everywhere, will satisfy the requirement 
of drinking a book. Drinking a book. Of drinking a cup of tea while starting a book. The Whisper Man, when I finish it, will check off the horror book from my potion, which stands for a vial of dragon's blood. And when I finish A Clash of Kings or the second book in A Song of Ice and Fire, I will have satisfied our first ingredient of them all, which is a golden compass or a book that has a map inside. Four. I will be missing four items from our potion, but that's okay. You can always add them later. I will finish Little Fires Everywhere in a bit. Like I said, I only have 100 pages, but first I need to finish editing this vlog, and I really want to watch... Okay, I, I succumbed. I bought You've Got Mail on Amazon Prime. It was five dollars. I had to, so I really want to watch that. I'm in the mood for a sappy romance that has to do with books in New York in the fall. It's just so idealistic and wonderful. So that is what I'm gonna go do, and thank you, just thank you so much for joining me on this, everyone. This was a lot of fun. With that, I will say good night. I'll put in some footage of our movie time and some tea. I will see you all on Tuesday, and with that, I will say bye-bye. Anyway, I so wanted to talk to you. I hope you have a good reason for not being there last night. You don't seem like the kind of person that would do something like that. The odd thing about this form of communication is that you're more likely to talk about nothing than something, but I just want to say that all this nothing has meant more to me than so many somethings. So thanks. <laughs>